somebody put a comment on one of my videos that said, this guy is smarter than he looks. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Claude, what, one question, if you got two minutes before, I know you probably got to run, but. I'm, go I'm good till the bottom of the hour. Okay. Um, this, this question is in my mind about, um, about how you came up in, in the business yourself. So you could, I've seen you on some, like you showed us a video one time of you on a TV show. Um, you've been on, you've been advertised in, what was it? The Washington post or New York times or, or Hey, bye-bye. Have a great day. And, and she's cute, Claude. You did good, man. How'd you pull uh, she, that off? We should get married. You should. You better, you better treat her right. Man. I know. I've known her since she was 16 years old. Oh, wow. Wow. And her parents still let me take her Oh, out. that's how you did it. That's how you did it. Oh, I see. I see how you are. How old were you? Uh, I, I was 17 and I turned 18 that night at 12 oh, o'clock. You, you old dog, you. Yeah, yeah. Seven, <laughs> yeah, I was two years older than her. So um, it looks like you were um, doing a lot of big guru type things. Um, what what point? What do you mean by big guru type? Well, things? Well, okay. If I were to ask nine out of ten people that are familiar with you, they would call you. They would refer to you as a guru. One because you've been around so long. Your, your knowledge and skill level. Uh, I don't. I don't mean that in a derogatory way at all. That's a compliment. Yeah, how could um, you take that as a derogatory? Yeah. That's a compliment. Well, I mean, maybe your age, but <laughs> you're not an old man. But you've been doing this for a long time. Let's go out. I'll give you. Let's go for a ten mile run, and I'll uh, give you a mile head start. Nah, okay. Yeah. No, I need more than that. I need nine and a half, <laughs> nine miles maybe. <laughs> uh, nine mile head start. Um, at what point? Or did you, or maybe I'm just asking a, a, a question I've invented the parameters of in my own mind, but did, did you at some point decide, hey, I don't need to do the TV shows and the ads and the, uh, you know, Wall Street Journal or, or whatever it is, you know, and, and all these things. I'd rather have this boutique thing than using your word, the boutique type shop, instead of pushing and pushing and pushing for more exposure attention limelight you know what what it may be does that make sense what i'm yeah, asking it makes sense um it was a you um it was an adaptation before the internet uh, all we had was newspapers and magazines as our primary when people were going to buy or sell houses they did classified ads and mm -hmm. they weren't cheap by the way i mean yeah. a little ad in the um LA Times or the New York Times or something like that is $100 for these oh, little, yeah. little bitty ads. Remember them? Yeah, I remember and doing that. In the old days, yeah. we used to take our yellow highlighter on every Sunday. I'd get the, all the newspapers and I'd yellow highlight all the houses for sale for rent. And that's how I got started in the business. I'd yeah. call people up directly, phone skills and marketing. And then um, as the business grew, we had a bigger budget. We were literally spending, I wish Claudia was back in the room here because she writes the checks, $10,000 a month. And I'm talking Stone yeah. Age time, yeah. Day, day. Yeah. Okay. But when you're spending 10000 a month, but you're making six figures a month, it makes sense. And that's yeah. all we had then. Then um, I slowly started to uh, do mailers because, uh, uh, you know, I, I'd have so many people... Yeah. Um, contact me we did postal yeah. mailers we had a big database of postal mailers so we'd mail out a newsletter um in fact if you've ever did i ever send that to you the old copies of the least yeah. purchased times i've got it yeah i mailed the thousands of those out monthly i mean and they brought me in business and people were mailing me in money and checks for my packages and some of those converted into mentoring yeah. so that worked really well too the postal mailing then um, I started to learn, and this, I hope this is okay to give you this long yeah. answer, but it's, no, this is yeah. incredible. Yeah. This is an evolutionary process. Yeah. Um, then I discovered I had to face my greatest fear. This would be a good video to share with the group. Maybe my yeah. greatest fear was public speaking. Um, but public speaking, man, if you speak in front of two nuns and a boy scout, you're going to make money today. Okay. Yeah. Uh, 
and I hated, I was scared to death of public speaking, but I read a few books by Dottie Walters, Dale Carnegie. I practiced, yeah. um, you've heard of Toastmasters. Yeah. Um, yeah. I eventually really. overcame my fear. And this is the thing about entrepreneurs. We're willing to, over, we're willing to do what most people want, will not do, overcome yeah. our fear. Yeah. I, I'll tell you something. I used to hyperventilate before a speaking gig. And I started speaking at real estate clubs and at business associations and every, and every time I spoke, I made money and I yeah. didn't have to do that back a run to the back of the room bullshit. Yeah. And just, and so the speaking really, and how much does speaking cost? You know, and I put on the little suit and the white shirt and the tie, yeah. the red or blue tie and everything. So that's where that went. And I still do, well, before the pandemic, I, I still spoke a couple times a year. Yeah. Every time I'd speak in like the, uh, one club, I, uh, I'm a member and a keynote speaker for the San Diego Creative Investors Association. It's the largest real estate club in the U.S. Yeah. Okay. It's in San Diego. And they invite me every year to speak. And I, and I have a ball. And every time I speak, there's new people there. And I give them free books. I say, go to my webpage. Here's a free book. Yeah. All these, like 100, 200 people go to my webpage, register. All of a yeah. sudden, uh, whole new influx of people in my database. I send them a personalized video. I make one video. I send it to everybody with the free book attached. So that marketing worked good and it cost me nothing. Right. Then eventually, so, and I did cable TV shows and yeah. regular TV shows. We were on, Claudia and I and uh, our baby at the time were on a talk show one time. Um, anything I could do, there's no such thing as bad publicity. But right. this is... This was all pre-internet days. And that is a ton of content, a ton of work. A, that it is was. an entire, that's like a business by itself, practically. Right. And I did it all myself. I didn't have a, I had a great sec, I had a British secretary. So when she answered the phone, it was that musical little British accent and nice. everything like that. <laughs> but I did it. I did the sales. I did the deals. I did the marketing. Claudia did the um all the books and accounting. She took care of the kids, homeschooled the kids. I mean, this when I say kitchen table millionaire, I mean, literally, we worked on the kitchen table yeah. doing all this stuff. Yeah. And so then I, I was still doing all these things. And then slowly we saw the newspaper circulation go down. Yeah. Um, and the internet started with um, America Online and Prodigy, yeah. AOL, yeah. Yeah. Um, all these things. And I started to do some marketing on there. What did we, in the old days, we had just uh, news groups yeah. and when the internet first started. So you start putting content on the news groups and, and look where it is today where we can, you and I were just talking about live yeah. streaming yeah. and YouTube and, For 50 bucks. And, 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 and all this stuff. Yeah. So, so the internet basically is what's caused you to evolve to the, to, to the systems that you, Evolu and the using. internet was uh, not evolutionary. It was revolutionary. It was one yeah. of those, like in going from the horse to the car, it was one of those, un it was, it was like getting on the first yeah. airplane, you know, it was a revolutionary change in our culture. So there is literally nothing that I should be considering doing really beyond virtual attraction marketing on a daily basis. Well, how many leads do you need? Um, is there a, uh, if you do social media, virtual attraction marketing, like you're doing, you're doing it brilliantly. You're all <laughs> over the place. Man, I, I don't think a day goes by. Justin Chamness doesn't come across. My right. Oh, exactly. Justin's on Periscope. He's on YouTube. Exactly. And, like, and you know, shut up money, baby. You know? Yeah. Um, and you do this so well. All right. And you're just you. putting out content. And what do you think? Reverse engineer it. That's what I always do. What do you think the people who are watching you? Somebody on Periscope. Oh, Who's mm -hmm. this shut up money guy? Let me, let me check this out. Yeah. And they see you and they start getting, so, and they, they have an interest in real estate or sales and all the things you do. What do you think's going through their mind? Somebody put a comment on one of my videos that said, this guy is smarter than he looks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. You know what Liveracci said? They, they, some newspapers wrote some very, um, nasty things about him real hate speech in those days yeah and some and somebody asked him and you know he was a famous piano player oh yeah lots you know, of rings oh lots yeah. of rings and yeah. glitter he was a showboat yeah. he was 
and he was in Vegas and everything. And but people were saying some very nasty. This was before the gay rights movement. Okay? Oh yeah, like, I remember. I mean, okay, yeah. and someone asked him once, and this is the one uh, one of those famous expressions that'll last through all time. They said, "How can you stand it? They're writing these nasty things about you and and all this." And he said, "You know what? I'm I'm crying all the way to the bank." Right. That's great, man. <laughs> That's that like great it. expression. <laughs> and I like it. So you do what you got to do. We accept there's going to be trolls. There might be fair or unfair criticism. Sometimes it's fair criticism. I can accept that and everything. But in the end, who wins? The Chamnus family. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The cable, yeah, bill, is, the cable bill is paid. You're sleeping at night. The washing yeah. machine breaks. You say, honey, just go order another one. I don't exactly. care. Whatever you want, sweetie. Yeah. You know, boom, the money's yeah. in the account. That's when life gets the quality of life. We is have just so good, you know, we the have, short time on this planet. We have never been happier as as individuals or as a couple or a family than we are in 2020. And I know that sounds so crazy. No, but it sounds that is, wonderful. That's my reality. We you know what's happier. my biggest problem? The biggest problem in my life? What's that? I don't have any. I don't have any problems. I don't have any shit to worry about. <laughs> you, you get fucking bored, right? I got, you know, I got great kids. <laughs> I married my my girlfriend here, my sweetheart. Um, the the you know we got mac and cheese uh, on the table, whatever great. we want. What you know what? And we're in good health, which yeah. is very important. Um, that's that's what life's about. Now worrying about. See, I've been where other people have been. A job I hate sitting in a car in traffic, spilling coffee between my legs. Yeah. It's not the caffeine that keeps you awake. It's that stopping short and spilling that big <laughs> you know, yeah. before they coffee hold it. Yeah. And, and, and the thing is, if you can just, if you having that m minimal amount of control in your life, yeah. tell me, tell me how good that is. Oh man. It's, it's such a, it's such a great place to be. I almost.